That's right, that joke was so funny, I just shit my pants. But I, uh, let's see, what else? I'm, I, I, I tell people two things. I'm 55 years old. I've been having trouble with my memory, okay? That's number one. Number two, I'm 55 years old. I've been having trouble with my memory. All right, some of you didn't laugh at your, that joke. You didn't think it was funny. That's okay. I, I understand. They can't all be winners. I... Actually, there's a story. I did that joke once. I used to do a lot of LSD, and in the 70s, I did that joke, and it, back then it was hilarious because it was from the future. <laughs> Thank you. So here's something really cool that just happened to me. My oldest daughter just had twin baby girls. Yay! So I'm a grandfather, when I'm really excited, so when they get old enough to teach me how to walk, you know, like, no grandpa's like this, you know. Uh, and of course, I will be able to teach them how to change their own diaper, so that's... Uh, <laughs> And I know if they're like my kids, they're always going to want to go outside and play catch. And I'll be like, all right, well, this time just don't drop me. You know? <laughs> and my daughter, they were born early, okay? They were born like way early, so they had to go into the intensive care unit, the, the NICU, which is neonatal intensive care. And there's really high security there. You can't just go in and see the babies. You have to go through security. Only the parents can go in and the grandparents. So we got to go in. And it was really cool because on our way out, we stole five babies. <laughs> They're little. You can just put them in your pocket, you know? <laughs> no, we didn't. We didn't put them in our pocket. We put them in a cardboard box and we sold them out front of Safeway. It took us forever to sell the black one, but anyway. <laughs> so we gave it away to a broken home, which is the first of my racist jokes in this set, in case you were paying attention. Um, but uh, my daughter told me that she asked me, what do you want them to call you? And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, you can, you can have them call you whatever you want. You can be grandpa, or you can be papa, or you can be grandpappy, you know, whatever. And I said, okay, this is cool. I think I want them to call me Skeletor. Ah, here comes Skeletor. Ah. <laughs> That's just this week. Next week, I'm going to have them call me Lady Gaga, you know, the, not Goo Goo Gaga. You know. And maybe just to fuck with them every once in a while, say, this week, I'm the Louisiana Purchase. Fuck you, you know. <laughs> They get all confused. They're like, what does he want to be called this week? Is he Barnaby Jones or the square root of, square root of 97? Somebody give me a calculator, goddammit. It's 9.85, round, rounded off to two decimals, in case you didn't know that. 9.8478858 for you Asian person in the audience. And that, <laughs> it's the second of my racist jokes in this set, in case you're counting. Thank you very much. But my daughter was really nervous. Uh, she didn't know if she'd be a good mom, and I was her parent. So I said, listen, here's what I learned about raising babies. When you drop them, they do cry. <laughs> and they usually don't stop till you shake them really hard. <laughs> hey, somebody you were groaning on that one, but my parents did it to me, and look how I turned out. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, I've been doing comedy for a while. I'm going to Rochester with Mike Dayu and uh, Chet Wilde, and we're going to go out there and do comedy. Thank you. Exporting some of Arizona's comedy out there. But I've been hanging around with these guys, and we're doing some writing so we can get some new material. And here's what I learned about writing with other comedians. And if you ever write comedy, just make sure you remember this. They'll steer you wrong. They'll fuck you up. <laughs> 
They'll say, yeah, do that joke. It's really funny. So they can sit back and laugh at you and the joke doesn't work. And I was writing this joke, and tell me if you can tell where this joke went wrong, okay? It started off, I gave him the premise. I said, I don't like it when people correct you on the way you pronounce words, all right? Like, you know, the other day I said envelope, and some guy said, oh, it's envelope. And, you know, fuck you, asshole. You know, I can say it any way I want to. And everybody, remember when everybody got all upset with George Bush because he said nuclear instead of nuclear? Whatever, we knew what he meant, right? And, and can we all agree that we can just pronounce it lesbian or carpet muncher? Or, a, or gas grinder, puddle jumper? I don't know, whatever, you know what I mean? I mean, you say tomato, I say tomato. You say potato, I get an erection, all right? Hey, I like potatoes. When I do the mashed potatoes, I, anyway. And who doesn't like a good french fry up their ass every now and then? Crinkle cut for your pleasure and season by mistake. I don't know, ow, that burns, ow. See, this is what happens when you write with these guys. You start off talking about the way you pronounce words and you wind up with a french fry up your ass. I'm Stu Baker, that's my time. I love you guys, you've been great, thank you. Stu Baker and the Bakerettes, everybody.